we're still trying to solve quadratics. We're trying to remember, take a quadratic equation and find out what value makes f of x equals zero here. So in other words, we're trying to find out where it crosses the x-axis. By the way, I love this one. Who's a good boy? And the dog's like, quadratic formula? <laughs> Is it me? So we have the solutions for the quadratic equation. This is actually in your formula book though, which is kind of nice. So um, first we have to, they write it like this, they write it a generic quadratic, so ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. We have that the solution, the x values are x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of, it's basically this, right? b squared minus four ac, so I didn't make my four look very nice, minus four, AC, all that over 2A. This is our solution here. This is what we get. Now this is thankfully on your formula booklet, so you don't have to memorize it. Uh, and it's extremely important, okay? This right here, formula booklet. There you go. Formula booklet. So what does this allow us to do? Uh, well, it allows us to find what values of x. We can do these by hand. Remember, we've been learning lots of other methods in the other videos. With a with a graph, for example, we can do it by factorizing. If it factorizes, we can complete the square. Well, this is a nice way. In case it doesn't factorize, this way will always work. Now, I had another video where I showed you where we got this equation from, so it didn't come from nowhere. Um, and in case you didn't want to watch that video, we just started off with this equation right here, and we just did completing the square to this thing in order to then be able to solve for x. But the end result was, ta-da! So as long as we know what a is, what b is, and what c is, then we can find x. Now there's usually two solutions like this right here, but not always. Turns out it can, it can cross never. You might wonder, what? How can it cross never? Well, watch this. Look, that one doesn't touch. Or it can cross only once if it's like, I don't know, maybe a quadratic like just touches it like that. So we're going to see those uh, later on. I've got another video about the discriminant to show you that. But right now we're just going to concentrate on the quadratic formula. So let's do an example. Let's find the zeros of the following. Now I always first try to factorize it. So first I'm just going to try to factorize. Question mark. Well, it has to be two numbers whose product is uh, AC, which in this case is going to be, well, let's write them out. A is 2, B is minus 4, and C is minus 3. Now don't just look at the order they're in, because sometimes they're trying to mess you up here. The idea is the number in front of x squared is a. The number in front of the x is b, and the number by itself is c. So in this case, product ac, which would be minus 6. And the sum is supposed to be uh, b. So we're trying to find two numbers who multiply to 6 and who add up to b, which is minus 4. So do those numbers exist? Well, let's see. To all the products of uh, negative 6, there's negative 1 and 6. There's 1 and negative 6. There's 2 and negative 3. There's negative 2 and 3. Those are all the numbers that multiply to minus 6. Do any of them add up to minus 4? That's 5, minus 5, minus 1, 1. Nope. It doesn't factorize. That's why it doesn't. So instead, then we're going to just use the quadratic formula. It always helps to show your teacher or the person examining you know uh, that you know what you're doing, so I'm going to just write it all out. All right, minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac, all that over 2a. So although it looks complicated, you just slowly make your way through the question. So let's show the substitution now. So that means I know that x will be, let's see, minus b will be minus minus 4, which is plus 4. Plus or minus square root of b squared well, 4 squared is 16. Now, minus 4 times minus 4 is still a positive, so that works. Minus 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is minus 3. All oh, that's going to be divided by 2 times 2, which is 4. All right. So let's keep going then. So we have 4 plus or minus square root of, let's see, it's 16. Now, what's minus 4 times minus 3? That's plus 12. 12 times 2 is 24. Oh, a lot over 4, which is kind of nice. Um, all right, well, this right here then, let's keep going. So we have x equals, I mean, do you notice? I'm, I'm not doing anything so complicated. I'm just doing a bunch of different steps, right? I mean, it's just, it's just steps. Just got to take your time, make sure you're all right. 16 plus 24, let's see, that'll be 40, 
yeah, 40. Maybe I'll make it a little bit prettier to look at. So 40, there we go, over four. Now you might think we're done, but it turns out we can use a little trick. Mm, what can we do? We can say, uh, I'll do it in purple maybe. Well, square root of 40, Remember your rules of SIRs are for square roots here. You can say it's the same thing as square root of 4 times square root of 10. Isn't that the same? And it turns out square root of 4 is nice because that's equal to just 2 times square root of 10. So I can use that. So I'm going to say this one right here is the same thing there. So I'm going to say it's x equals 4 plus or minus 2 root 10 all that over 4. Now I can divide them all by 2. They all divide by 2, I guess. You know the 4 and the 2 and the 4 here. So I could say 4 divided by 2 is 2 square root of 10 over 2. So this right here will be my, I guess you can see the simplest form of the answer. This right here will be, I think, as nice as I can make it. So I'll just write it down like that, actually. That'll be my answer, and I'm done. Now, those would be the two different places. I mean, you could, technically, if you wanted to, obviously you can split them up. You can say, ah, so x1, some people like to write with a little 1 here. So it's 2 plus root 10 over 2. And x2 equals 2 minus root 10 over 2. Same, same. Oops, i got to make the whole thing over 2. You could do it like that. These are the exact values, okay? Um, you could, of course, whoops, I'll make it, uh, I'll make it. Red. So I'll say or, because those are both right. You could, of course, do it on your calculator if you wanted to. So let me just uh, open up a calculator and do that. There's so many ways of doing this on a calculator. Uh, how should I do it? I know. I'll do a menu and I'll do algebra, because I could have graphed it. I'll do polynomial tools. I'll do the roots of a polynomial. I'll try that one, see if that one works for me. So it's a degree 2. My first term here is a 2, the next one is a minus 4, the next one is a minus 3, and I say go. And now keep in mind, it gave me the approximate answer. So there's minus 0 0.581, minus 0 0.581. We also have x equals approximately uh, 2.58. Let's see, is that really the case? A way to check is, what is, let me just show you here, what is 2 plus square root of 10? I'm just going to try to do the whole thing right here just to see, like, what is 2 plus root 10 over 2? What does that give me? Hey, look at that, it's the second one. And if I go back up and I say, what's that one, except I change it to a minus. I'm really lazy. I could have just rewritten it. There we go. Look, whoa, hold on a second. That was the times. Stop, stop, stop. See, I was too lazy. I messed it up, actually. Sorry, I'll put a minus here. Wait, what? Oh, I know what I'm doing wrong. I keep trying to put the wrong minus sign. Maybe you caught it, what I did wrong. That's just me being really silly. It's not mi that minus, it's this minus. I was using uh, that one, it's this one. Phew, there we go. Math still works. So there we go, we got the answers. Now we did it exactly by hand, or if you can use a calculator, you do it that way. Let's do another one. Here's a tattoo of the quadratic equation. So here we have a weird one where we've got x squared plus k, uh-oh, x minus 3. And they tell us the equation for the axis of symmetry is this, what's k, uh-oh. Well, it helps to know what the equation is for the axis of symmetry. So you look that up in your formula booklet, and you see that the axis, maybe I'll write it down like this, I'll write a nicer a here, axis of symmetry is always given by x equals minus b over 2a. That's just a fact. That's just something about the axis of symmetry. So it's just minus b over 2a. Now the good news is they told us that is 1 half. So watch very carefully then. I'm just going to set that equal to it. So I'm going to say, ah, 1 half equals minus b over 2a. Does that make sense? I'm just setting my x value here equal to 1 half because that's what x is. Okay, but I need to know what the different letters are, so let's do this, the different coefficients. A is the term in front of the x squared, which is 1. B is the term in front of the coefficient in front of x, which is just k. And C is minus 3. So what do I do then? I have to fill in what is B and what is A. 
notice that, so I'm going to say that, so it's going to be my one half equals minus, and instead of b I put in k, that was the important part, and all that over two times one. So I'm just going to make this a little bit simpler then, I'll just maybe do it in purple. So then I have one half equals minus k over two. Well then I can multiply my two to the that side, so I get two over two, which is just one, so one equals minus k, Therefore, k equals, well, I can divide both sets by minus 1, or I can think of it as moving this over and this over. I get k equals minus 1. That's my answer. So k is minus 1. I've found it. I've solved it. Hooray. Now, why can we? Do, what can we do with this? Well, if we want the zeros, let's maybe rewrite what f of x is first. Let's just rewrite that with k now, now that we know k. So it's x squared, and it's minus x minus 3. Why is that? Because k was minus 1. So I'm going to put that into there. So now I know my equation, which is kind of nice. If I want the zeros, what do I do? The zeros are when f of x equals 0. So I will set f of x here equal to 0. So 0 equals x squared minus x minus 3. Maybe it'll help me out to just to write out my a's and b's and c's again just to make them clearer. So a is 1, b is minus 1, and c is minus 3. Now I'm going to use my quadratic formula. Remember, we'll do this uh, girl's tattoo because it's there. Minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac, all that over 2a. I assume it was a girl, it doesn't necessarily have to be actually. Uh, but there we go, so we have this. I just plug in my numbers and away I go. So let's see if I can do it. So I'll have x equals, let's see, minus b, well minus minus 1 is just a plus 1, so it's 1 plus or minus square root of, what's b squared? Well minus 1 squared is just 1, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is minus 3. All that over, 2 times a, a is 1, so it's just 2. I keep going. So that gives me, let's see, 1 plus or minus square root of 1, and let's see, what's minus 4 times minus 3 is plus 12. So it's going to be plus 12 over 2. Uh, I'll keep going maybe just to finish here. So x equals, I have 1 plus or minus the square root of 13, all that over 2. Now that is my answer sort of in the nicest form I can do, right? So this is uh, sort of the the best way to write it, I think. It's the most compact way. Again, you could split it up, couldn't you? You could write it as, uh, you know, x equals, you could say x1 equals, you know, 1 plus root 13 over 2. And you could say x2 equals 1 minus root 13 over 2. And you could approximate it if you wanted to with a calculator. You could check that it works. You could graph it. There's lots of ways of doing it, right? But I just want to show you how to do it at least by hand. Um, so why would you ever want to use this? Well, we have quadratic formulas all over the place in math. I mean, they're really all over the place. Uh, they end up, you know, when we're modeling situations, when we end up with a problem where you have a quadratic at the end, and you're supposed to do the zeros. They're supposed to be easy to find, but they're not always, so that's the important part. Uh, examples in physics, for example, uh, 2D motion, like if I launch off a cliff, you know, if I throw something or I'm thrown off a cliff, something like that, let's just say this is a cliff here, and I'm, I don't know, I'm thrown... I'll go, you know, in this sort of path. That's the path I'm going to follow before I sort of land on the ground. This is all modeled by perfect, nice parabolas or parabolic equations or quadratics. So you'll see that uh, in physics, for example, anybody uh, who's watching this, if you take IB physics, you'll notice that our equations of motion, especially for the displacement, uh, have to do with things like with a half a t squared. You notice there's a t squared, it makes it a quadratic. And a is negative, so it's a minus. That's what explains these shapes. So these things, they're all related. So a lot of things in the world have uh, parabolas, and a lot of times you might be wanting to find out the zeros of them. So a quadratic formula is just one way of doing it.